people in this auditorium and people who are watching on television across America and around the world who desperately need a miracle in their life today. You need it in your health. You need it in your family, in your marriage, in your business. The purpose of this sermon series is to teach you how to have a miracle in your personal life. We begin today with the miracle in your mouth because the words that you speak are life and death. Proverbs 18, 21 says, life and death are in the power of the tongue. Say that with me. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Nothing in between, good or bad. Notice there's nothing neutral. What you, either, what you say is either like apples of gold in pitchers of silver, or it's a deadly poison, a cyanide, that destroys your peace, your hope, your health, your marriage, your relationships with both God and man. God, our creator, give everyone in this audience and those of you who are watching seven openings in your head. Now, I know seven is the number of completion And I think I understand why. You have two eyes, two ears, two nostrils, and one mouth. Because one mouth is all you can control. (laughs) Maybe sometimes we don't do so well at that. The Bible message is, control your tongue or it will destroy everything you hold dear. Today we're going to establish the Bible fact that miracles still happen. Turn our attention to the power of your tongue and then give you the ability to experience a miracle in your life before you leave this auditorium. Read with me Job 22, 28. Ready? And you will also declare a thing and it will be established for you. When you declare the whole word of God, You are speaking the most powerful utterance that can be spoken on earth. You have that power and that connection with the Lord. The miracle in your mouth. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for these people who are here. Now let the anointing of the Holy Spirit fill this place and let us receive the divine wisdom of heaven that our lives might be blessed exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or imagine. In Jesus' name we pray and ask it and all of God's children said amen. You may be seated. Look at the parade of miracles that are in the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He breathed into a handful of dirt and man became a living soul. He scattered the stars against the velvet of the night The sun and the moon, all are celestial evangelists, testifying to every nation in every language that there is a creator greater than man that made all of this happen. God's miracle working power delivered the Jewish people from 430 years of Egyptian bondage by a parade of miracles. The virgin birth of Jesus Christ was a staggering miracle that turned the world upside down. The birth of Jesus Christ shook the Roman Empire. In the ministry of Jesus, it was based upon miracles. Listen, people didn't go hear Jesus because he was a rabbi. Israel was full of brilliant rabbis. They went to see Jesus because it was a demonstration and parade of supernatural power, the miracles. He changed water into wine. He cleansed the leper, something that was impossible for man. He walked on water, which was impossible to man. He raised Lazarus from the dead. Read this text, and from the birth in Bethlehem until the resurrection morning, it is one major miracle right after the other. The message is our God is a God of miracles, and those miracles are still for today. Give the Lord praise in the house. People ask, so how do you know that they're for today? Because the Bible says the Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forever. 
What Jesus did in his ministry is what you should be able to expect when you go to church. And if your church doesn't believe in miracles, you need to find another church because the New Testament is filled with miracles. You should be able to experience that in your life. When you want what you've never had, you've got to do what you've never done. Have faith in God. You have to believe it to achieve it. Believe it to achieve it. You need to expect a miracle. Develop the miracle mentality. The Bible, nothing is impossible to those that believe and are called according to the purposes of God. Do you believe that verse? Do you as a person believe that verse? Nothing is impossible. Nothing Nothing, nothing, when that really breaks through your cerebral cortex and it registers, it will change your life forever. You'll never feel sorry for yourself another day. You'll be looking for a way to turn the power of God loose on the things that disturb you or those who come against you or the adversary. You have the horsepower to be more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. Act like it, live like it, and talk like it. There are some who teach the age of miracles is over. You're dead wrong, and here's why. If miracles were, were supposed to stop with the apostles, as some teach, why did James, who was the last apostle, teach in James 5.14, saying, Is there any sick among you? Let them call for the elders of the church. Let them anoint them with oil and pray the fair faith, and save the sick, and the Lord shall raise them up. That's a miracle. James, who was the brother of Jesus was the last apostle. If God wanted miracles to stop, why was James telling the church to keep on praying and believing for miracles in the future for people who were sick and afflicted? Why did James make this shocking statement to his followers? Why did Jesus make this statement? Greater things than these shall you do. Greater things, greater than raise the dead, greater than walking on water, greater than changing water into wine, greater than that. There are simply no limitations to us. We have tried to put God in a box and contain him to a 90 minute experience on Sunday morning. My friend, if that's all you have, you need to really know the God of the Bible. It is a 24-7 mega experience with God's power looking for a way to escape and demonstrate himself to you. Where do we go for miracles? I have often said this. Miracles come in cans. When you go to the supermarket, every product known to man can be found in cans, little cans, big cans. In the Bible, it says, I can through Christ. You are needing to develop the birthing mentality. There's a miracle on every shelf in this book. You can have a better marriage. You can get free from your addiction. I can recover from this financial crisis created by the coronavirus pandemic. I can be healed from this dreaded disease. I can be delivered from anger. I can be delivered from resentment. I can get over rejection and bitterness and the heartache that I'm living through. I can climb this impossible mountain. I can go through the valley of the shadow of death for thou art with me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can, I can, I can. Nothing is impossible. Give him praise in the house. When you want something you've never had, you've got to do something you've never done. Many of you watching this telecast need a miracle. We're going to have a prayer so that you can experience a miracle. I want you to develop a miracle mentality. Nothing is impossible to those that believe. Consider the supernatural power of your tongue as recorded in the Bible. Proverbs 21, 23. He who guards his mouth and his tongue keeps himself from calamity. You hear that last word? Calamity. 
You can talk your way into the grave. Medical science has proved that. You can talk your way into deep depression. You can listen your way into deep depression. You watch fake news long enough and you'll be sick 24-7. You can talk your way into a divorce. You can talk your way into hell. The Bible says all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire. You have to talk to lie. Your tongue does that, but your brain gives it the permission. You've heard people say, well, I said that without thinking. That's not possible. You may have said it and tried to get it back a split second after you said it, but you said it. You know, maybe we should stop disliking people for what we've heard about them. And be grateful God does not dislike us for what he knows about us. Mm. In our lives, we must be true worshipers who embrace God's presence, regardless of our surroundings. How can the power of praise change your life? Thank him. Be humbled and obedient to him. And see his power released in your life. To help experience the power of praise, consider our latest project, The Heaven in This Place live album CD with our very own Cornerstone Sanctuary Choir. For a generous gift of $175 or more, receive this album along with an exclusive Psalm 100 artwork and the Heaven in This Place live concert DVD. I pray these resources will bless your home. We're created in the image of our Heavenly Father and every blessing we receive is a gift of His divine will. To receive your gift today, call the number on your screen or visit jhm.org slash praise. Job twenty two twenty eight. you shall decree a thing. That's a proclamation. You shall speak in an existence based upon the word of God and it shall be established for you There is a miracle in your mouth looking for a way to happen. Words have power. The tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue defiles the whole body, and it is set on fire of hell. That's in the Bible, word for word. The words you speak are vital to your health and well-being, or your words can poison your mind, it can poison your spirit, your emotions, it can poison your health, it can poison your marriage, it can poison your future. Words can do that. Solomon writes principles of speech in Proverbs. Proverbs 18, 7, a fool's mouth is his destruction and his lips are a snare to his soul. A snare is a trap. A snare is something that catches an animal and doesn't let it go. How many of you have been entrapped by your own speech from time to time? Mm. God bless all 10 of you. <laughs> Proverbs 12, 18, the tongue of the wise is health. Health. Meaning you can talk your way into physical sickness. Proverbs 13, 3, he who guards his mouth preserves his life, and he who opens his lips shall have destruction. Proverbs 15, 4, a gentle tongue with its healing power is a tree of life. Your tongue, according to Solomon, is a tree of life, but willful contrariness in it brings and breaks down the spirit. Let me ask you a question. Are you contrary? Are you, do you like to argue? Do you enjoy cutting other people down? Your tongue is set on fire of hell. That's not a cute trait. Let me tell you the story of the experience of my uncle Joel LaVon Hagee. Uncle Joel was a pastor all of his adult life. He was a wonderful man. He was a fabulous preacher. He had a heart attack. He believed the word of God had healing power and he made a tape of all of the healing verses in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. 
And he told his wife, Vivian, if I ever have another heart attack, put these healing verses in my ears, no matter what the doctor says, put them in my ears. It happened. Years later, he had a major heart attack. The EMS came to his home. The EMS personnel could not revive him. They raced him to Mercy Hospital in Oklahoma City. Another uncle of mine who was there, Dr. Robertson, who was the chief of staff of that hospital, received Uncle Joel and raced him to the ER room. They hooked him up to the machines and he flatlined. That's not good news. My aunt immediately put the headphones on his head, the recording verses of Uncle Joel. The medical staff looked at her like she's lost her mind. As they started to leave the room, the heart monitor began to blip, blip, blip. And the nurse said, he's got a heartbeat. My uncle not only recovered, in a few days he was up and home. There was a scramble for those tapes in the hospital with the healing verses when Uncle Joel was discharged. I got a copy. I made it available to our church members and television audience. And those tapes are now all over the world producing a parade of miracles. You can get a copy of those tapes by jchim.org slash healer. There's a miracle in your mouth. How's that work? This is how it works. I, John Hagee, proclaim based on the authority of the word of God that I shall live and not die, but I shall declare the works of the Lord. Psalms 118, 17. You have forgiven all of my iniquities. iniquities. You have healed all of my diseases. You have healed me from heart condition. You have healed me from my stenis gravis. You have redeemed my life from destruction. When that demonized man entered our church and tried to shoot me six times at a point blank range. You were there and the angels of God protected me. <laughs> Psalms 103, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. What are they? Who forgives your iniquities and heals all of your diseases. What is an iniquity? An iniquity is a sin that you know is a sin while you're committing the sin and you commit the sin anyway because there are sins of omission and commission. I'm not going to get into that, but when you know you're doing wrong and you do it anyway, God says, even I'll forgive that. And heals all of your diseases. Nothing is impossible with God. God's limitation is our faith factor. And here's the problem with Christians and faith. The Bible says faith cometh. Cometh is a Greek continuance verb that means it's in the process of growing. People don't ask God for little things and then when they get to major things, their faith has not been developed. Start believing God for little things and they'll get bigger and better and larger. He wants to do that, but you need to start somewhere. When you go to the gym, you don't go to the barbell with 500 pounds. You get the one with five. <laughs> Start where you are. Miracles I have witnessed. Down I went to the doctor years ago and said, you have cancer of the breast. She had a double mastectomy. The doctors went back in to examine and said, we cannot find it. You did have it, but you don't have it. She now enjoys ridiculously good health. <laughs> my daughter Tish came to my house. She put her foot inside my house and I saw a little knot on the ankle. I said, where'd that come from? She said, that happened last Friday. It just popped up. I said, what is that? She said, I don't know. We're going to find out. We had her check Monday. It was, according to the a uh, cancer doctor, one of the most aggressive types of cancer that you can have. We looked on the internet, life expectancy, six months, first level of treatment, amputation. I said, God, heal my daughter. 
She went to the doctor. She had a surgery. That last six months happened and gone 10 years ago. My daughter is in perfect health because she has been touched by the great physician who gave her absolute victory over all of this. Point, when you get your mouth right, things will go right. Let me give you four Bible conditions for healing very quickly. One, you have to confess all of your known sin. God demands that you get your sin question taken care of. Secondly, believe it is God's will to heal you. Expect a miracle. The Bible says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. God said to Israel, If you will obey me, I will put none of these diseases upon you. Talking about the diseases that were in Egypt. I am the Lord your God that healeth thee. And all of the children of Israel, over a million people for 40 years, not one was sick or feeble among them because God was their health policy. I'm telling you, God can be your health policy, especially right now it's with what's going on in the United States of America. Mark 16, 17, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out demons, they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. They shall recover. They shall recover. Give the Lord praise in the house. Thirdly, the healing power of God is activated by the word of God. My son, forget not my law. That's the word of God. For length of days and long life it shall give you. This is the greatest health manual you can read. The Bible says it shall be health to your navel. The navel is the source of life of a baby in the womb of the mother. And mara to the bones. In the mara of your bones is where the red blood cells are resuscitated and re-energized. This is the source of life. This is the source of restoration. Proverbs 4, the word of God is life to those who find them and health to all of their flesh. How often do you read the Bible? It's the greatest health manual in print. It's the greatest spiritual charger and energizer you will ever experience. Don't just carry it to church for 90 minutes on Sunday morning. Live by it, read it, obey it. Let it change your way of thinking, your way of talking, your way of living. This is the word of God. Give the Lord praise in the house. Lastly, you must act upon your faith. Jesus said to the cripple at the pool of Bethesda, rise, take up your bed and walk. Do something to demonstrate your faith. Jesus said to the man seeking healing for his withered hand, stretch out your hand. Moses, put your foot in the water and put your rod in the water and the water will divide. You take action. Elijah, you pour 12 barrels of water on the sacrifice and I'll send the fire. Faith without works is dead. Act on your faith and watch God go to work. How many of you in this audience and how many of you watching by television need a healing in your body, in your family, in your marriage, in your mind? Worry, fear, bitterness, resentment, anxiety, depression, those things, there's something in your life you want God to do for you supernaturally. If that represents you, I want you to stand and I want you to join me in this holy proclamation that we're going to make. Those of you who are watching by television, extend your hand toward the screen. There's no distance in prayer. Say this with me, congregation. Father God, Based on the authority of your word, I confess that the power of life and death are in the tongue. Heavenly Father, I ask your forgiveness for the things I've said that are poison to my soul, my body, my mind, my relationship. You have set before me life and death. I choose life. I choose life. 
You have set before me blessing and cursing. I choose blessings. You have set before me poverty and prosperity. I choose prosperity. Any generational curses that have tormented me or my family are now destroyed in Jesus' name. I release this holy proclamation that breaks the chains of sickness and disease by the power and authority of Jesus' name. I will live in the joy of divine health. Amen. Give the Lord a shout of victory. The Holy Spirit has the ability to guide you, the power to heal sick bodies, to break the chains of addiction. The Holy Spirit brings peace to the tormented and hope to the broken. We thank you for your support, your prayers, and your generous giving. Now stay tuned to the end of this message for Pastor's Blessing. I'm so grateful that I chose differently. I'm so happy that I chose you. I get to see you become the person God intended you to be. I'm grateful for Sanctuary of Hope, for preparing me, for guiding me. Most importantly, Sanctuary of Hope is my safe place. It's where I can lay my baby's head down and know that God has a shield of protection over us. Thank you, Hagee Ministry Legacy Partners. Because of you, my baby has a chance. Because of you, I had the option to choose life. There has never been a better time to share the love of Christ with a mother and a child than right now. When you partner with Hagee Ministries, your legacy impacts lives and transforms a nation. Call today or go to jhm.org slash partner. You've been watching Hagee Ministries. And now, your blessing with Pastor John Hagee. And now may the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. And may the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you, giving you his peace. May you know with a divine knowledge that the word of God will birth a miracle in your life. Just pray and ask for what you need. The word of God says, ask and you shall receive. The difficulty that is before you, God knew about it before you saw it coming. Ask in the mighty name of Jesus for the answer, and he will give it to you. You are a child of the Most High God. The Word of God says no good thing will he withhold from those who diligently seek him. Ask in faith, believing, and God will bring it to pass. In Jesus' name, receive this blessing. <laughs>